a medical genius, a hero. Those are just two of the compliments being paid to Dr. Albert Sabin. The Polish-born New Yorker came here to Cincinnati and Children's Hospital in 1939. Over 20 years as the hospital's virus and cancer research chief, he developed and tested an oral vaccine against one of the most frightening diseases ever. Polio crippled and then killed hundreds of thousands of victims. When Sabin came to Cincinnati, Polio was crippling up to 30,000 American children a year. Dr. Helen Gluck was a UC medical student then. She remembers how frustrating it was just to walk through a polio ward without a cure or even a treatment. You didn't know whether they were going to live, whether they were going to die, whether they were going to be paralyzed. And here you were, young, a doctor trying to help, and there was nothing to help with. This is where Dr. Sabin worked to change all that, in a fourth floor lab at Children's Hospital. Here he cultured forms of the polio virus thousands of times looking for some way to stop it. The search wasn't easy on him or on his students or his lab workers like Paul Anderson. Very demanding. Uh, not everybody could work for him, I'll put it that way. I don't know how, but anyway, I stuck it out, but I guess I could see a greater prize too. But all that grief and hard work paid off. What Sabin finally discovered in the 1950s was a weak strain of polio that would help the body's immune system identify and kill stronger polio strains. Dr. Sabin's colleagues say that they'd often find him in a lab just like this one until 11, 12, 1 o'clock in the morning doing his very own research. But during the 40s, few of them ever thought that the work that he would do here would actually end up helping put Cincinnati on the international map of medical research. I think it brought tremendous notoriety uh, to Cincinnati. I think it, uh, it as far as uh, the city is concerned, Albert Sabin was not a, uh, was a, not a national figure. He was an international figure. And we have a lot to thank him for. In 1960, many Cincinnati children were among the first ever to get his live poliovirus vaccines in the form of sugar water or sugar cubes. They came during Sabin's Sunday vaccination drives. Back then, he explained why. I've been asked to say a few words about the program of giving the live poliovirus vaccine by mouth to all children in Cincinnati from three months of age to about six years of age. The purpose of doing it, actually, is to find out whether or not the reasons we have now for believing that poliomyelitis can finally be completely wiped out can actually be carried out under conditions obtaining in American cities. 